Good morning. Welcome to Sunrise Stroll and Chat. Look at that giant with his two eyes really spread out. Hiding there in the rock, big giant. It's just a piece of Mount Arbel, people. It's the only piece that's visible right now because the road is blocking it. So we'll catch it later. You're looking straight at Tiberius in Galilee, at the Sea of Galilee. 2001 year old capital of Galilee as declared by Herod Antipas. Herod the Tetrarch. So the sun is a little late today and the technical announcement is sun rises at a minute to 6 a.m. And now we're quite a bit after that. So we're about 6.13, so wow. So let's say it's not even visible yet, but it's obviously in action. You can see the color. Let's stop a second just to check out those beautiful colors. I'm moving a little fast this morning. I hope it's not too fast for you. Yeah, I see more with the eye than this good camera is picking up. But it's nice, you know. So let's walk a little bit further south. We're just south of Magdala. Here, in fact, I just see Mount Beatitudes right now. It's right there in the very center of the screen. I won't open it up. Let me keep walking. We'll catch it in another moment. This is a big uh, water main under this cement cover. A little bit more of Mount Arbel visible right now. Oh, there's the sun, just emerging. Let me show you this detail. Look, there you have it. There's the sun, sunrise again today. You see all the cloud between the top of the Golan and the sun. Wow, beautiful, 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 beautiful. I hadn't seen that. And it's just getting stronger by the second as the sun comes into full command of the space of the atmosphere. Riding like a warrior forth from its bridal chamber to course its route from east to west. I think that's Psalm 19 if I remember properly. And if we look just over here, we'll steal for a second. We can actually still keep the sun in view. Actually, we can. So now if you look to the left, almost at the center, there's a bigger dominating bush above the other level. But keep going left and you see some little like little brambles, small little branches of dried up bush. And then there's a big green tree to the left. We'll go back to those little brambles and right on top of them, they're touching Mount of Beatitudes. But I want to, well, I'm not sure, should we stay here? Maybe we stay here. Let's stay here. Look at this here. Look at this rock. And you can see the water mark on the rock. That's how high the water got this winter. So it's not a full meter down. We're a little close to traffic, but that's part of the deal of this route here. Just saw these nice grasses here. We can get a little closer in a moment. And actually there's some nice flowers, little ones, a few of them over on that bush behind the grass, but we'll get there afterwards. So this is the beauty of this morning. Now the sun is completely clear, but it's going to be hiding behind the clouds just above it shortly. How about that, folks? Isn't it marvelous?
Isn't it marvelous? Look at that. All for you, this sunrise. All for me. All for all of us. He brings his rain down on the good and the bad alike. If we say that in Ireland, oh boy, I forgot to connect the microphone. That must be much better. Is that correct? That must be much better. So, you know, he brings the rain down, the good and the bad alike. And that's a great line for people living in a desert. In Ireland, it wouldn't work so well. But we can say he brings the sunshine down for the good and the bad alike. For, all, for everybody. You know, I see a lot of people there giving a lot of reaction and I, this is marvelous because this is actually encouraging other people to chime in. It affects um, the way Facebook analyzes and presents this. So you're doing part, you're part of the team here when you're reacting and, and you're part of the team internally as well when you're, I see so many beautiful developments of people naming a prayer intention and, and people supporting people commenting a situation of the others you know building community in a world today that's become very anonymous very you walk through the street and you can pass 400 people in five minutes and nobody says hello to anybody because everybody's in their own world completely isolated and you see the others but you're kind of saying this, this is dangerous for me to get too close to these people so i'm staying away but Somebody from Malaysia says we have this prayer intention and people from Alaska and Finland and South Africa are chiming in. It's just, this is just marvelous. So we're losing the color on the lake, but then let's see the magic that's happening up here. The one we did on the 8th of May, and that's actually May, June, July, August. That's three months ago. Can you believe it? Can it be? Yeah, it is three months ago. And the one we did on the 8th of May was like fire. That's that close up of the of the sun uh, in the sky was amazing. I just stumbled on the picture the other day again. It was absolutely amazing. You know, for all of those who are new here, we're doing this since uh, the Corona period and began. And so it's become a, a venue. Uh, it's become a kind of a home base. It's become uh, a beautiful space for us, a beautiful time in the day. Uh, it gets me moving as well. So you might say you're all saying thanks to me, but I say thanks to you for participating because, you know, if there was nobody tuning in, well, why would I do it? <laughs> I might go out and have a walk. And, uh, but this is a beautiful blessing for everybody. Appreciate that. And I think we're building something beautifully here together. So let's look a little bit at one of our texts for today. The readings have quite a challenge in them today. You know, the Word of God does usually have that to it. It's, um, it's something pretty powerful, isn't it? And you know what? Hmm. You know, I don't have it at hand. I have it on audio. <laughs> but I can't play that now. So... Well, let me tell you a general commentary. So, and I've, I've listened to this a number of times already since yesterday and read it. Um, we're reading from Ezekiel, I think it's chapter 9. And I know one or two of you are going to post it shortly. Um, and I just want to say first one general thing about Ezekiel. And it's valid for all the prophets. You know, they have their stroke of the sun is emerging again above that cloud. So they have their, you know, their strokes of denunciation and um, foreseeing great woe for the people going into exile and great suffering. But they are always giving a message of hope and that God loves his people. And I love Ezekiel because of the great visions he has of the dead bones coming back to life, the, the Kedron Valley being filled with water from the temple going and making it flourishing and both sides of the banks giving fruit every month, all the trees and the Dead Sea being turned into 
uh, a more bountiful fish place than the Mediterranean. You know, and nothing can really live in the Dead Sea with all the salt. It's 32% salt. The oceans are about 3% salt. So that's 10 times more salt, you know, so nothing can live in there. Well, actually, there are some bacteria that are in there. It's a very interesting topic, but it's not our topic now. And the Dead Sea is connected to the Sea of Galilee by the Jordan River. Or the Jordan River is connected to the Sea of Galilee because it carries the water from here to the Dead Sea, but not that much gets there, and then it evaporates. So that's part of the problem of the Dead Sea. So then the first thing about Ezekiel, even though we're dealing these days with words that are very... Uh, they put us on edge, you know, they're putting us in a, in, a, in a tough spot. They're calling us to accountability. He was calling the people at that time to accountability. So uh, we don't like that, you know. We, we prefer just to go free and not to have to answer to anybody. But actually that might not be the truth of the human being. It's definitely not in corporations. It's definitely not in clubs. It's definitely not in associations. People are answerable to each other. But actually it's not in the whole human family. We're answerable to each other. If I leave a, throw in a bag of garbage right now into this beautiful water right here, and some people do that, then wouldn't that be a terrible pity come here and find, you know, empty Coke, uh, plastic bottle floating, and another piece of blue plastic, and torn plastic bag, and, you know? Uh, we have to, we, everything we do affects everybody else. And this is one of the things that was very strong in the biblical conscience, the corporate community. And if one person got leprosy, they had to go outside the camp because they were threatening the whole camp. And if one person in a family had leprosy, it was huge probability that other family members would get it because of the close proximity. And so there was a tremendous sense of solidarity, of being one body, and it was more about the people as a whole than about the individual. And one of the very important developments that's highlighted, it's gradual, it's over time, and it still happens in our time, uh, at the time of Ezekiel, is he's emphasizing personal responsibility. We are responsible for our faults. I can't say I have leprosy because my dad had leprosy. I have to take care of my health. I'm an alcoholic because my dad's an alcoholic. That happens a lot. And many other unfortunate things, like we've learned a lot in the last few years, how children who are abused become abusers very easily. It's difficult to redeem them. It's a huge challenge. It's not impossible. With God, everything is possible, but it's a huge challenge. So we're tied together and obviously a person who became alcoholic because the father was alcoholic and he, that's all the little kid experienced his whole life, you know, obviously his culpability is reduced but it's not removed. It's not completely removed. We are responsible. We are responsible. And this is one of the messages of Ezekiel and today we have those, wow, little bird was there the whole time listening to my spiel. These are very black, intense black. It's amazing all the beautiful colors birds have. And this one is an intense black. It's like a duck, I think, but I'm not sure what it is exactly. And I'm not good at that. So um, it's amazing then how there's this call with um, Ezekiel to be responsible. And these heavenly beings come to mark with a tau. That's like a T-shaped letter. And on the foreheads to indicate those and the words are very interesting. They have been groaning, and there was another word, moaning under the evils of the time. But God noticed. Humanity is not isolated. God noticed. And those people who are not in agreement with the evils of the time are being signaled out for special, beautiful salvation treatment. And this reminds me of that line in the Mount of Beatitudes that we've commented a couple of times in the last months. And up here we have the Mount of Beatitudes over those little brambles right there behind them. And that beautiful line that's a little mysterious and needs a little reflection, but it's so powerful. Blessed are those who mourn for the sake of justice, who weep for the sake of justice. Why? They're weeping because there's injustice going on and they hate it. 
but they're so weak in front of the powers of injustice that they can't do anything about it. They're helpless. And they mourn, they cry. Like a little baby in the bottle broke. And they're crying, they can't fix the bottle again. And they're frustrated. And they're crying. And so we cry, we mourn in the face of injustice on the earth, the oppression of the poor, the abuse of the helpless, the misery that's so extended, and we weep over the injustice. And he says, those who are mourning and groaning under the weight of the injustice. That's a very, very powerful line. Where are we? Okay, you might not be the president of a country. I don't think I haven't seen any presidents of countries uh, following this Facebook chat, uh, live st uh, stream every morning, sunrise, li uh, live stream, sunrise, stroll and chat. But um, you might be an elderly person, maybe a lot of time in bed because of weakness, uh, fending for yourself, maybe a little bit alone because of Corona, family couldn't visit so much. Or maybe they had a different type of virus before and they didn't have time to visit you so much. And they were so busy with so many important things to do. And, uh, and yet you can be moaning and groaning and God notices. Because your moaning and groaning isn't just complaint. It's, it's the pain of the evil that's oppressing. But you're opening your heart to God and letting him work. I think there's a tremendous amount to be chewed upon there in... Ezekiel today, very powerful words. And then these are people are being marked with a sign that they will not be hurt or damaged. You remember the scarlet ribbon in Jericho with the lady Rahab ties it on her door and you have the blood on the doorposts in Egypt. You have this mark, this signing for salvation. And actually, in Christian theology, baptism, I encourage those who have never heard about it, but an indelible mark on our soul. That's the theological expression for this incredible gift we receive in baptism. The indelible mark in our soul that sets us apart, not to feel exclusive, not to feel superior, not to get arrogant. Absolutely not. It'd be total contradiction. But to be in God's embrace in a special way, and to be free then to do all the good we can for the most needy around us. Let's go for a little stroll, people. And if somebody could just write for me the verse of the psalm, the response verse, because I don't have the written text in front of me. So if you could just, one of you, write the verse of the psalm that we have today. The link is already posted for you where all that is, but I want to see it. Because I don't remember it now. And I want to show you these flowers here meanwhile. Somehow we're always blessed to have some flowers. Let me see if I can get this in here close up. Look at all the flowers. Not too many, but sufficient to have delight. Even one flower brings delight, right? The gift of a rose. Isn't that beautiful? And a little bud coming along here. Where is the bud gone? Where are you gone? Oh, there you are. And then you have two more down here, three more, four more. They're coming along. They're a little bit behind in the game. But they're coming in their own good time. You have a long tripod, so, I, you know, I'm not as close to these flowers as you are right now. <laughs> They're over there as well. So we can go for our stroll. There are hundreds of little midgets here, but I don't think you're gonna see them with the camera. And then there are bigger insects. And I have a special aversion to midgets. They're like tiny, tiny little flying creatures and they would be in the bushes. And in the summertime, around this time of the year, we'd start cutting bushes on the farm 
to open up a road, you know, the bushes will grow like wild and with all the rain. Oh, wow, look at all these flowers. And then all these midges would get upset naturally because I was cutting off branches and they would pick you and bite you amazingly. And it was very hard to deal with them, get rid of them. Now go down here. This one is smaller, but it has also a lot, a lot of flowers. I don't know the name of that plant. Maybe somebody does. Blessed the man who is gracious and lends to those in need. I think we had that yesterday as well. Blessed the man who is gracious and lends to those in need. And that is what is needed so much, you know, there's so many needy people, needy of affection, needy of remembrance. Not a beautiful vegetation there. This is a different kind of tree. Again, I don't know the names. There's a storm there. It's very interesting to see the water creating the waves wrapping around it. You notice? There in the center of the screen. First of all, I thought it was a fish or something, but obviously it's the little waves breaking on the stone. Isn't that an amazing piece of art in water? And it's so fleeting. It reminds me of a subject I was thinking of earlier this morning. You know, wrestling with some of the big challenges of our world and things that are fleeting. And some people put so much store on them and work so hard to get them and they're gone in a second, like those waves. You know, how long does that wave form last? And it's replaced by another one and by another one. And the human heart needs something much more, something more permanent, something everlasting. That's the demand of our heart. That's what our heart wants. Nothing less. Give me something everlasting. And obviously there's a movement that's also willed by the Creator because of the seasons, because of the sunrise and sunset. So there's a movement in every day, but there's also a, something, a permanent fixture. In a certain sense, a tree is a permanent fixture. You plant a tree and it's there through three or four or five generations or more. Like our olive trees it can be hundreds of years old. Now here's a different plant with the bloom. And again, maybe one of you can tell us what it is. Isn't that beautiful? I have the camera zoomed in, so I'm not sure. Let me let me bring it back, and or I'm not sure if I should open it up even more. Isn't that amazing? Look at the little insects working there. Wow, so many insects. And they're all busy harvesting their nectar or whatever it is they're hunting there. Wow. They look like ants. I'm not sure if that flower expected so many visitors. And that's just dry branch and look at how beautiful it is. So this whole idea of permanence and fleeting, 
the poets talk about it a lot. You remember that famous poet about a poem about the was it Shelley or who wrote it about the Pharaoh's head buried in the sand in Egypt. I was blessed to be in Egypt with our community just before Christmas and I, I, I dredged up that poem from uh, the internet. We had studied it in high school. And then when you read it after 46 years of consecrated life, <laughs> almost 50 years later, it's wonderful to read it again. Have you ever gone back to read some of the poems that touched your heart when you were in grade school or high school? And to read them again now from this perspective of your life, decades later. Wow, there's a lot of, a lot of bloom around here right now, isn't there? We'll have to come back to this road again. It's at least I'm enjoying it. The lake is quite calm. It was actually very still uh, earlier. Look at the, the different shades. People, it's been a delight this morning. Just wonderful. Thank you for all the sharing. I didn't check the numbers. I didn't uh, get to that this morning from yesterday, but I think it was very high and very beautiful and many people were blessed. So all your sharing is doing great wonders and you good YouTubers subscribing and inviting others who don't have Facebook to see it afterwards on YouTube. It'll be a little bit later this morning because I have quite a walk back to the house yet to get Wi-Fi to upload it to YouTube, but I'll be doing that. And I'm going to say, God bless you. Goodbye. See you later, alligators. It's just marvelous. Let's pray for the world that's in need, and especially for all our good friends up in Lebanon, so close to here, that have been so hurt, so hurting. And over in Syria, so much hurt. That's over in that direction. Let's pray that there'll be a sunrise for all of these people. God bless you.